This is the first in a new repair series which I hope won't be quite as long as the previous one. Anyone watching this may well be familiar with one of these. It is of course a compact cassette and uh, these have been around for a long time. In fact I was speaking to somebody only a few months ago that didn't actually know what this was and um, in retrospect that's perhaps not surprising these stopped being in common use um, around 20 years ago so they are very much uh, now a vintage uh, piece of technology um, but even so these were quite cutting edge when they came out uh, compact can store quite a lot of data and the equipment used to play them was very interchangeable you could take a cassette from one manufacturer and put it into pretty much any piece of equipment they varied in quality of course but fundamentally the format was fairly standardized and it was uh, around for quite a long time however leading up to this there were other formats now a very good youtube channel called techmoan has done a lot of very good videos on the various formats that were available so i'm not going to go into all the formats and their uh, pros and cons uh, this is a repair video so what we're looking at is a machine that doesn't play these it, it actually plays these um, obviously it's a, a format that preceded the cassette by several years not quite as many years as um, might be apparent by looking at their size um, but it was one of the very early uh, one of the very first formats to be used for uh, an encased tape cassette system and now obviously this is far bigger than the compact cassette and accordingly the machine that plays this is also accordingly quite a bit bigger than the machine to play one of these so we'll have a look at it um, it's not my machine again I've got it in for repair um, we'll have a quick look in this video and then in the following videos we'll get it stripped down and see what the faults are okay so this is the machine that plays these cassettes um, as you can see it is somewhat bigger than a standard cassette player um, but this was the Sony Walkman of its day it's uh, an RCA Victor model CP1 which I think um, stood for combination player and this was version 1 these were designed and manufactured in the mid to late 1950s so obviously it's a very old piece of equipment and you can see the heritage in this sort of equipment when you look at the manuals that were supplied with it and they start talking about how to open the cassettes, how to splice tapes, this sort of thing which is obviously a, a procedure is very familiar to people that used open reel uh, recorders and players um, but not something that um, was expected or uh, was even uh, really possible with uh, compact cassettes so it's a very interesting piece of equipment we'll have a, a quick look at it uh, then I'll open it up, we'll look inside as ever I'm not going to power it up until I've had a look inside uh, this is obviously a, a piece of valve equipment this will have valves inside not um, uh, more modern um, electronics uh, so we'll have a quick look look inside uh, and then um, in the next videos we'll start looking at uh, repairing it so I'll remove the lid so as you can see it's very similar in its overall layout to a standard open reel um, tape player the only thing they've really done is put the reels inside a large housing they haven't really done anything to modify the way that the player itself is uh, constructed or the way the heads are arranged so I'll just move the camera so you can see the, um, the layout of the heads and the caps and etc more clearly okay so that becomes even more apparent when you turn the unit onto its side and it now starts to look far more like a standard open reel recorder uh, the entire layout is very similar the only thing that's different is um, the way the tape is handled and of course you don't need to lace up the tape every time you want to play something you just pop the um, cassette into place and uh, away you go I won't put the cassette in now because I want to clean this first I don't want to damage the tape uh, also the tapes are hard to come by and um, it is important that uh, when I work on this that I don't put a tape in um, if I suspect it's going to chew the tape up or, or do any damage 
There's various uh, breakages I can see already. Uh, although these look like metal, um, they're not, they're plastic. And it's 1950s plastic, so um, if you cough too uh, hard next to it, it will probably shatter. Uh, so there are cracks in it and splits in various places, but um, hopefully I can bring it back to life as much as possible. Um, but the main thing is I want to get it working. I want it to be able to play the tape and uh, interestingly see how it sounds. So, and I'll get it opened up, we'll look inside, and I'll go from there. I've taken the bottom inspection cover off, and as you can see, it is a piece of valve equipment. Uh, it's quite a complex um, device for its age. There's um, quite a nice amplifier built in. I would say this is a recorder, not just a player, so um, it is uh, quite advanced for its time. So we've got a fairly beefy speaker, as I say, quite a nice uh, amplifier. Now, on the motor, it does say 117 volts, so I'll need to see if it's 117 volts only. Uh, there is a big transformer up here, so I don't know if it works on 240 as well, but I'll check that before I plug it in, of course. I've got some work to do in here before I can plug it in. The motor, it will turn, but it's um, very stiff, so I'm not going to try and force it. If you've seen any of my posts on various forums, you'll know that I restore a lot of valve equipment. Bilco radios, Bush TVs, that sort of thing. So this is uh, quite uh, familiar to me and I will be going through this and uh, almost certainly there will be work to do under the chassis uh, on here. Uh, but the next thing is to get the top cover off. I want to get this uh, taken apart completely. I'll need to do some work on the transport mechanism, take the chassis out go through all the electronics and uh, mechanics and then reassemble it and see if it works. I now have everything stripped out of the cabinet so I'll start by testing the speaker. As you can see this all needs a good uh, cleaning out inside but uh, I'll start by testing the various parts first. So I've got this uh, hooked up to a, a tone generator. So that works fine, uh, so we'll have a look at the uh, chassis. Okay, so this is the chassis. It's in extremely good condition, it's very clean. Typical for the construction of the time. It's the inverted uh, clamshell chassis, cadmium plated steel, all the valves and transformers on the outside, all the controls along the front. And um, the only thing I was surprised to see here was uh, this. Uh, I don't believe these were available in the 1950s so I believe this was probably originally one of these that's been replaced at some point. These do have a tendency to, uh, to start cracking and um, there isn't really a sensible w way to repair them. Uh, but it uh, shouldn't be a big problem. Uh, I've got a valve tester if I need to um, replace valves. I've got some spares. If I have a look on the underside. Again, fairly typical construction for the time. Uh, a lot of paper caps in here that almost certainly will need replacing. Uh, some interesting uh, mechanical contrivances for some of the controls. Um, but uh, nothing unusual in here. Shouldn't take too long to get this sorted out. Um, interestingly, it's got a, a solenoid in here to activate one of the controls. Uh, I'll, but I'll go through this and check it all. Replace any parts that need replacing check the valves, replace any of those that need uh, replacing and um, get this up and running, that shouldn't take too long. Uh, decide what to do about the two uh, main smoothing caps, these will be liquid filled uh, electrolytic caps, even if they um, reform and start working I'll probably restuff them and uh, that's mainly because if I leave them then once the unit's gone through a, a few heat cycles and run for a while then almost certainly these will go short and the unit will stop working. Uh, so that's it for the chassis. Um, quite interesting, very simple and it shouldn't take too long to get this uh, up and running. So that takes us on to this part which is the transport mechanism. When I first uh, opened this uh, I wasn't too surprised to see uh, copper. Normally equipment of this era was either um, cadmium plated steel or copper plated steel. 
but when I look more closely I'm surprised this is not copper plating this, this is solid copper so this entire chassis is made from solid copper apart from the aluminium casting at the, uh, at the top so as I said earlier the um, manufacturer seems to have spared no expense whatsoever in the design and manufacture of this all the bits are extremely well made the materials they use, not just the material itself, but how thick it is, there's probably a kilo or, or two of uh, copper in here. Um, it is uh, largely seized, it moves slightly, not too far, so I need to strip out the uh, various gears and shafts and clean them up. It's probably just um, dried up grease. Uh, clean up the, uh, the various parts, and then I can get this reassembled and um, hopefully get the entire machine up and running fairly quickly. What I'll do now is get this done, I'll do it off camera, it's quite a dull process going through these and um, once each part's finished I'll uh, show it working and um, see if we can actually finally play the cassette in it.